girls. Happy Easter. I'm so excited to be here with you this morning. I wish I could see your faces. I miss you all so much. I miss hearing about what you've been doing and exciting things you want to share. Sometimes not so good things you want to share, but then always come back with a good, um, a good thing to share, right? Well, this morning, we're going to continue on with our lesson in the last 24 hours of Jesus's life. So um, I'm going to pray and then we'll get right into our intro video. Dear Lord, we thank you so much that we can come together and still worship you and learn about you, Lord, um, even in the midst of um, not being able to be together, Lord, but we can digitally, and we just thank you for um, these opportunities, Lord, and we just pray that our friends are doing well. In Jesus' name. The following takes place between 11.14 a.m. and 11.18 a.m. Events occur in real time. Hello, recruits. It's me, Special Agent Jack Bow Wow. I'm here in the headquarters of the top secret organization known as Q-TIP. Q-TIP stands for Questionable Training in Progress. As my personal recruits, I feel it is my responsibility to clue you in on some of the things that have been happening here. It seems that our nemesis, our enemy, Dr. Fullowax, has continued to cause all kinds of problems for Q-Tip. I've been accused of allowing him to be one step ahead of us at all times. Not only did he infiltrate our computer system with a dangerous virus, but he also has done many other things to foil our plans as well. Well, I thought we needed to do something to help us catch up to Dr. Fullowax. You know how Dr. Fullowax has his little Mr. Cuddles? Well, I thought I should send one of my assistants to the store to get me a pet sidekick as well. Excuse me, Agent Bow Wow, I have returned from the pet store. Wonderful. Did you get me a pet sidekick? Yes, I did. Perfect. <laughs> and it's ferocious looking, right? Um, uh, well... Well, is it something that's going to make me look tough? You know, a snivering, snarling, drooling, flea-bitten, eight-legged, little old lady scaring, coupon cutting, red light running, rotten, prinkled, wrinkled, stinkified varmint? Okay, here's the thing. I, uh, we... Just show me what you got. Yes, sir. Uh, it's right over here. Ta-da! You got me an Easter bunny? That's what you bought? But it's so cute and fluffy, and I called it Chloe. I didn't want cute and fluffy. Let me see it. Okay, how's that look? Aww. What do you mean, aww? Listen, I sent you to the store with enough money to buy an extinct dinosaur, and what you brought me back was a, a white, fluffy Easter bunny? Here, take that back. At least tell me how much money you had left. Well... Surely you had some money left. I sent you with so much, tell me you didn't spend all of it. Um, I spent it all. All of the money? Listen, you're going to have to go back and get your money back because that is not going to work for my sidekick. Yes, sir. Oh, well, one thing is for sure. That little white bunny is not worth the amount of money that he paid for it. I'm not willing to pay that much money for a little white bunny. How do you determine what something is worth? How do you know if the price is right? Well, that's exactly what we're going to be learning about in our training today. You're not going to be learning about fluffy white bunnies, that's for sure. Everybody knows that's not what Easter is really all about. Instead, you are going to be learning exactly what happened to Jesus three days after he was crucified on a cross. I'll give you a hint. It is something worth celebrating. Now, as usual, I may have to contact you throughout the day. So you just keep your satellites tuned in to this frequency, and I'll break in when necessary. Well, time is of the essence. It's time for you to get into your training. This is Special Agent Jack Bow Wow, signing off. What an incredibly packed 24 hours Jesus had on his last day here on earth. From the Last Supper to the Garden of Gethsemane to being arrested and tried and beaten and ultimately nailed on a cross. We have learned a lot 
about the last 24 hours of Jesus' life here on earth so far. When we last left Jesus, he had died on the cross, right? He chose to do this. He knew it was the only way to pay for our sins. And once he died, everyone stood around crying. They thought Jesus had failed because he died. They didn't realize what was to come. Jesus had a plan all along. The soldiers took Jesus' body off the cross and it was prepared for burial and placed in a borrowed tomb. And they placed a really big stone in front of it, in front of the tomb. And it was to prevent the disciples from taking his body and claiming that he had risen. Jesus predicted that he would raise, rise from the dead after three days. Well, three days later, that's exactly what happened. God raised Jesus from the dead. An angel rolled away the stone from the tomb and Jesus walked away alive. A few hours later, some women came to the tomb to um, anoint Jesus' body with some perfume. And guess what they found? An empty tomb. Jesus' body wasn't there, just the cloth that they prepared him with. Suddenly, angels appeared and said to the woman, why are you looking for Jesus? He isn't here, he's risen from the dead. The woman went to find the disciples and tell them the good news. Over the next few days, Jesus appeared many times to his disciples and gave them important instructions. Then he rose up in the clouds and went to heaven where he is preparing a place for Christians to come and meet him one day and spend eternity. What an amazing story, right? Jesus died and he rose again. And that's why we celebrate Easter. In our lesson today, we're gonna learn why he chose um, to die and rise again. And you're gonna learn how he paid the price for our lives. It's gonna be amazing. Let's go right into our Powerverse video. <laughs> well, 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 children, it is I, Dr. Full of Wax, and I'm back with another secret message from Q-Tip's cold book, The Bible. I shall discover and decipher its true meanings. Isn't that right, Mr. Cuddles? Mm. This week's secret message says, you do not belong to yourself, for God bought you with a high price. First Corinthians, 6, 19, and 20. Hmm, this is quite the conundrum. I have an interesting idea. Perhaps if we have the boys help us say it, the message will become clearer to me. All right, boys, on the count of three, you will stand. Are you ready? One, two, and three. You do not belong to yourself, for God bought you with a high price. 1 Corinthians 6, 19, and 20. Very good, boys. Now you may have a seat. Now I need the girls to stand up and help me say it, okay? Then maybe I can figure out what the secret message means. Ready, girls? Down, Mr. Cuttles. On the count of three. One, two, three. You do not belong to yourself, for God bought you with a high price. 1 Corinthians 6, 19, and 20. Great job, you may sit down. No, 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 lickies, Mr. Cuddles. Remember, you're still rabid. You could make daddy sick. You know, I think I may have figured out what this message means. You see, Dr. Fulawax is at a crossroads. Being evil takes its toll on a genius such as myself. And reading through this code book has really changed the way I look at things. I've even considered possibly contacting Agent Bow Wow to see if he would forgive me and, and take me into the team at Q-Tip. And after reading this last code, I think it means that Jesus paid the price for all our sins, even me. And because of him, I can be forgiven. 
Maybe Agent Bow Wow would forgive me just like Jesus? I think I may have solved it, Mr. Cuddles, but just to make sure, I got to have everyone say it with me one last time. Ready, everybody? On the count of three. One, two, three. You do not belong to yourself, for God bought you with a high price. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. Good job, everybody. You can have a seat. Well, Agent Bow Wow, looks like I cracked your code and learned something that would make me a better person. <laughs> nah, I better get back to trying to crack Q-Tip's code book, the Bible. Until next time, I'm Dr. Full of Wax, and this is Mr. Cuddles bidding you adieu. Welcome back. Well, our lesson today is called The Price is Right. So imagine that you're going to a store and you're going to buy something really great for Easter, really cool. Maybe a giant Easter egg or a really cool Easter basket and you walk up to the register and you pull out of your bag these Easter eggs. What do you think the cashier, do you think the cashier would let you pay for these? He keeps thinking, hmm. Of course he wouldn't let you pay with these. You would obviously have to use this, money. It's the only thing you can use to pay the price. Right? Well, did you know that there's something besides money that was used to pay the highest price in the whole world? It's true. Do you want to see it? Okay, here it is. A cross was used to pay the highest price ever. Well, let me explain. Sin cost a high price. The Bible clearly teaches us that we are all guilty of sin. If we're in the courtroom of life, we would have to know, we would have no choice but to plead guilty. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned. That means you, that means me, If this silk represents sin, and this bag represents your life, the silk definitely would belong in the bag, right? Because we have all sinned. And it only takes being guilty of one sin to deserve death and hell forever. That's what Romans 6.23 said, teaches us. For the wage of sin is death. That's a huge price. One sin, and the price is death forever in hell. That's not good. But God never wanted that for us, right? That's why he sent his son Jesus to come to earth, to live life without sin. Even though he was innocent, he was arrested, convicted, and sentenced to death. The reason I showed you that cross and said it was used to pay the highest price is because Jesus paid the highest price for our sins. Even though we were the only ones guilty of sin, Jesus chose to be nailed to a cross in order to pay a price for a price of death for us. He gave his life in our place. He paid the highest price. And that price was right. Because of Jesus, I can be forgiven. 1 John 1 9 says, But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from our wickedness. That means that even though we have sin in our lives, if we confess our sins to God and believe that Jesus paid the price on the paid the price on the cross. Remember, this, this is sin and this is us. I can be forgiven. 
The sin in our lives is all gone. Jesus paid the price so we can be forgiven. The best part of this whole story is Je Jesus died for us, but he didn't stay dead. Three days later, he rose from the dead. Do you remember where he is right now? He's in heaven, preparing a beautiful place for us to live with him forever. What an amazing Easter story. Jesus paid the price, and that is the right price. Dear Jesus, we thank you so much that you chose to die on the cross for our sins, to save us, Lord, because you love us so very much. And Lord, I just thank you that we get to celebrate what you did for us each and every day, not just on Easter, Lord. And we just thank you for all our friends, Lord, and we pray that they are all safe and well. In Jesus' name, amen. I can't wait to see you guys next week. Bye.